Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nakia and today's video is going to be a Q&A. So I asked recently on my Instagram as well as on YouTube, I put up a um, community post asking you guys what questions that you had about data analytics or being a data analyst. So I'm gonna answer those questions today and I'm also taking some questions um, from my day in the life as a data analyst video. I'm taking some of the questions from that video to answer in here as well. Well, so I just want to give a quick disclosure that these questions that I'm answering is going to be from my point of view and from my work experience. Companies can be different and have different practices or policies and plays for employees. So just know that just because my company does it one way doesn't mean that every company in the world does this. And if you are a data analyst, data scientist, business analyst, please leave feedback below to these questions if it varies um, depending on, you know, where you work and what industry you're in. Just so we have like a lot of different perspectives here, but let's get started. So the first question was about work-life balance um, in my current role. And then um, the person commented that they see that I work from home and they just wanted to know if I work 40 hours per week. So that's the second question. So let me answer the first one. So about work-life balance, um, I just wanna say like, for the most part, it's good. Like I usually will work, eight, uh, will work an eight hour day, but there are times where it's terrible and it's just kind of like the nature of the job. You have fire drills where you have like an executive that needs something immediately and everybody's scrambling to get this information for this executive or this VP or whoever it may be. So there's times where it's that, there's times where you have um, clients that you're doing work for where they give you last minute requests and they want it by the end of the day like sometimes the requests can be unrealistic as far as turnaround time but they will in my experience people will escalate so in those cases like i'm working more than eight hours a day and sometimes more than 40 hours a week so it all can vary for the most part i will say that i work 40 hours a week, but I don't necessarily, it's not necessarily always just eight hours a day. Recently, there was a time where I worked my eight hour shift, I worked from seven to 3.30, and then I had to log back on and work from five to 7 p.m. So I worked 10 hours that day. So the way that I choose to balance that out, and this is at my discretion, is that if I have to work longer hours one day, um, I will shorten another day or I'll take an extended lunch another day. Like my manager knows that I'm doing this. Like she understands like if I'm trying to balance it out to be at 40 hours for the week, those are things that I'm able to do, no questions asked. So it's just what I gotta do. So if that means on a Friday, I'm leaving two hours early, that's what I'm gonna do. If I can, like if work permits that I can, like I got everything done, then yes, I'm going to balance it out that way. It's at my discretion to do stuff. So. so in that way, I do try to balance it out. But there are times where you just can't. You have so many projects, like there's times where it's busy and it's just you're going to be over 40 hours or you may like I had to log on to get work done like that night from five to seven. I had to work those two hours to get my work done that day because it had to be done that day. So things come up and that's just the nature of the job. And um, about the working 40 hours per week, I think I kind of covered that. Like, yes, typically I work 40 hours a week. Sometimes it can go over 40 hours a week, depending on the work and the projects and if it's busy or not. So that can vary. And um, oh, there was another question. How do you like being alone during the work day? Did you have to get used to it from working from home? So I don't like it. I will be the first to say, and this is not everyone's perspective, people seem to love working from home. I don't want to be at home all day by myself. I don't like it. And even though I'm not like, I'm, I'm an introvert. So even though I'm not this talkative person in the office, like, I just like to be, like, I like to people watch. I like to be surrounded by other people that are working. Like, that's just my preference. That's not an option for me right now. But like, I just prefer like, even if they were like, oh, we're gonna allow you guys to go into the office like one or two days a week, because for the 
for the departments that do go into the office, I think they go, like there's a schedule of when they're um, able to go into the office, but I don't know if that's going to change. It, it could because a lot of companies are trying to get employees back into the offices. So not to say that I'll be working from home all the time, but I do prefer to go into an office to answer your question. I don't, I'm probably not the norm, but I don't like being at home alone. And that's probably the reason why I don't like working from home because I am here by myself all day. Just me in the computer and the TV. Did you get any training before um, I got into this role, before becoming a data analyst? And no, I had no prior training. I'm kind of, I guess I'm what you would call self-taught. Like I got training, some training from my company, maybe like after being in the role for almost two years is when I got some training on like SQL, but I had already been learning SQL on my own, watching YouTube videos, doing Google searches, learning from my manager and other people on my team, learning that, Tableau, Click, learning how to use all of those different tools. So no, I did not have any training prior to the role, but if you're self-taught like I don't know if it's easier to get into the role being like not having any prior experience I would think like with anything if you have prior experience that's probably better but I didn't have any prior like prior experience doing SQL or working in like Tableau or Click or, or any of those things all right so next question is is a lot of math involved is it hard to learn the math part so yes math is involved you need to know I would say like you need to know algebra um, of course, your ba basic math, um, but like algebra, statistics, a lot of statistics are involved in data analytics because you're having to give insights on data and it's a lot of data that you have to consume. So like you have to know what, what to average, when to average, um, what data is going to fall out of scope of your project, what is what data is outlier data that you need to exclude. So yeah, like there's statistics, I think. I think that's important. And then also, I I always say like um, ex using Excel. I don't know if this is for everyone, but like we use Excel. Like I still have to use Excel. Like some people want their data in Excel. Like we use Excel all the time. So also know how to use Excel. Know the Excel formulas. That's important to know too. Because when you're in SQL, I use formulas in Tableau. I'm using formulas. So know some formulas. Um, and I think if you know Excel formulas, it's easier to kind of understand how the formulas work in SQL as well as Tableau and other dashboards. Okay, next question was, um, this person said that they are looking into a career, but they have children and they wanted to know if the position is flexible so they can take them to school, pick them up. For me, I pick my schedule. Like my schedule isn't based on what anyone else on my team chose. Like my schedule is my own. I get to pick my hours. And if I need to adjust my hour, like if I need to adjust what my schedule is going to be going for, because like, let's say a life event happened. Um, and like right now my schedule, I'm off before four for the most part. So if I, let's say I want to change my schedule where I work nine to six PM and that would be my schedule going forward. I have the flexibility to do so. So it's flexible in that sense, but I am still expected to work my eight hours a day, if that makes sense. Like I can't just like, if on a daily basis, I was like, oh, told my manager, hey, I need to leave at 3 p.m. to go pick up a kid from school and bring them home and break up my, like, I can't, I don't, we don't have split schedules. So my manner, if that was something that was continuously happening, my manager would come to me and say, hey, you need to adjust your schedule. For example, there is someone on my team, they are working a schedule around their kids because they work at 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. and they need to be off by 2 p.m. And this person's in another time zone, but they need to be off by 2 p.m. their time to get their children. It's flexible. They chose that schedule. So if that's what she needs, that's what she needs. That's her schedule. It is what it is. I hope that answers the question. Like it's flexible in the sense that I get to pick my schedule. So if it's something where you're like, oh, I need to work certain hours. Yes, it's flexible in that sense that I got to choose, like I got to choose my hours, but no, I don't have the flexibility to like every day. Like, like I can't, I don't have a split schedule where I can break up my day, if that makes sense. But I hope that answered your question. Okay, so it's a, the next question is, in your opinion, will AI or ChatGPT replace the data analytics role? 
So in my opinion, I don't see it replacing the data analytics role because of all the stuff that we do. I think it's another tool that we will have to use. For example, Tableau didn't make Excel irrelevant and eliminate Excel. It's just another tool that you would need to learn how to use. So that's my opinion. I think it's just something else that data and like a data analyst will need to learn to use if their company is allowing it. Our company is not, but I don't see it replacing the data analytics role. I see it being something else that a data analyst will need to learn to use. And I also see it as like, I, I feel like there's going, like it will lead to de-skilling in this role where it's less like you're required to know less to do the role, which could change the data analyst role, which could change other things like pay. I feel like it may push it to where the role isn't what it is today. The skills you need to be in this role aren't going to be at the level that they are today. So that's just my opinion. You guys chime in and let me know if you feel the same. Do you spend all day, every day, analyzing cleaning data or do you do other admin stuff admin stuff too so yes the 70 to 80 percent of the time we are analyzing cleaning data especially if you like are coding or using um like tableau or click or something like that yes you are analyzing and cleaning data all the time but i also do other admin admin stuff like i am doing meetings client meetings a lot of client meetings you are learning about new things coming to the business i also have time and this is something that's agreed upon between my manager and myself because she is she's big on training so she allows us to block out time in our schedules for training so and stuff like dedicated training time so that you are like upskilling, you're learning new things, you're taking internal trainings and things like that to better yourself, to put yourself in a better position. Because with the data, like the role is constantly changing and there's always new things coming out. So you need, and then also you may want to eventually like go to the next step or go to another role. So you want to have the skills behind it. So that's something that I'm doing trainings, I'm having meetings, we're having calls, we're doing Jira tickets, you're communicating with clients, you're trying to ignore all the Slack messages that come through and get people to use the proper channels for things. But yes, we do other admin stuff. We're doing Power, or maybe not, what is it called? What is the Google version of PowerPoint? Y'all know what I'm talking about, but we're doing that, you know, work and stuff like that. So yes. I am doing a 70 to 80% of the time is cleaning data, analyzing data, presenting data. But so next question, I think this is the last question. Um, any advice for a new data analyst? So my advice would be to fail fast. And with that, it's what that means is to recognize failures and errors in your data fast recognize mistakes fast it may take you some time to get there but try to find errors so you can make corrections fast because when i was new to the role again didn't know anything it was hard like doing my first project on my own and the clients coming back this is wrong this data doesn't match and that like you feel terrible that you made a mistake or an error so i wish that i had like, I wish that I had made those mistakes while like those things, those mistakes when I was in like kind of like getting ramped up and helping other people out on the team and shadowing them. I wish I had more hands on time to make those errors instead of it coming back on like my first project that I'm working on my own. Because I feel like I would have been able to, for me personally, I feel like I would have been able to recognize the errors had I been doing the work on my own initially and then like, oh, this isn't going to work for them. So that would be my advice is to make your mistakes early on. Even if you're working on your first project by yourself, find the mistakes. Don't take it in a bad way. Just learn from it, correct it and see how you can improve going forward. Second piece of advice would be save your code. 
save your code. I would like, I don't know what I was doing, but when I first started out, I wasn't saving any of the code that I was using because some projects come back as a rinse and repeat. Like, oh, you remember six months ago when you did this for me? Can you redo that for me? Because not every project lands where you got to create a dashboard and stuff. Sometimes it's just writing code, put it out, like put it out in Excel, at least in my case, putting it out in Excel, sending a file over and whatnot, or doing a PowerPoint project or doing analysis, doing a PowerPoint. But save your work. You never know when you're going to need it. And then also when you go back to it because you've learned more in between time, you can clean up that code as you learn more. Like in, I used, I know when I first started out, I used to create all these temp tables, temp table with this data. All these temp tables when it was like, I don't need to create all, when I came back to it, it was like, I don't need all these temp tables to join data. Like I would create a temp table, have all that data, create another temp table, and then create a third one to join the first two tables together. Waste of time. And I learned about subqueries and left joins and all these other like um, unions and all these other things that I could do to help condense my tables that I was doing. Cause you know, the database admins, they would send me nasty messages that I'm using too much space and I need to drop these tables. So you learn as you go, so keep all of your like old work, like any old SQL code or anything that you've working on, you've worked on, keep that so that you can use it going forward if you have projects that are kind of like a rinse and repeat. And then also so that you can improve on your code. Shadow other people on your team, ask them for their code. If they're willing to share it, some people don't wanna share, but see if they're willing to share their code, see if you can read it. That's the first thing. Try reading other people's code understand to see if you understand what they're trying to do. Just have them send you something random. Read through it because not everybody codes the same way. Like I remember someone's code was going across like this. It looked like they wrote a book. I just could not. I could not. So just read through it. See if you can see what they're doing. Format it in a way that makes sense to you and then run it to see if it actually did what you expected it to do. But yeah, that would be my advice to you for someone that's a new data analyst and welcome to this madhouse. <laughs> but I think that is going to be it for this video. If you guys have any other questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one.